Hello and welcome to episode 231 of the Managing Uncertainty Podcast. I'm Brian Strausser, Principal and Chief Executive here at BrightPath. And in this week's episode, I want to talk about your board of directors. In particular, I want to talk about your board's role in helping you build geopolitical resilience in your organization. One thing that we're often questioned on and, and we run into a lot as an obstacle within organizations is where resilience leaders are telling us that their board and the executive leadership just don't care about resilience. They don't care about business continuity, crisis management, and crisis communications. And I want to tell you very clearly that that is not true. That, in fact, in 2024, at the near top of your board's agenda when they think about risk and at your CEO's agenda when they think about risk is geopolitical risk. And that you have a great opportunity as a resilience leader to think about how you can help your executives and your board by sharpening your own understanding of the geopolitical context, of the developments going on on the geopolitical stage, and exercising uh, that muscle that helps you influence the C-suite and your board of directors. Companies right now are really taking a hard look at the makeup of their board. Part of this comes from the recent regulations here in the U.S. where the Securities Exchange Commission has basically ordered companies to have more cybersecurity experience as a part of their board of directors. But we're also seeing companies begin to recruit leaders who have more global experience, more geopolitical understanding, more geopolitical risk understanding into the board. And the reason for that is this very connected digital world that we have today, a world that is very flat where we depend upon just-in-time inventory and delivery of goods and the interconnectivity around the world to make a company work. And this world is also fragmenting. We're seeing more geopolitical risk than we have in years past. We have conflict right now between Russia and Ukraine that has gone on for over a year. We have conflict happening, armed conflict happening between Israel and Hamas. Um, we're having supply chain disruptions across the Red Sea. We're seeing terrorist organizations have drone capability and they're attacking um, merchant ships uh, in the Red Sea out of Yemen. These are all challenges um, both tactical and strategic, that are facing organizations. Your board right now is really seeking to understand how they can enhance their own understanding, uh, their own ability to monitor and mitigate geopolitical risks that are impacting your organization, the risks that are threatening you today. So there are some tactics that we suggest that boards take. Um, this includes diversifying your board's experience so that you have more expertise in geopolitics and global security, an understanding of geopolitical risk, that your board consider altering its committee structure so that you have more specialized committees that are addressing geopolitical issues or geopolitical risk, and aligning board roles with management where certain members of the board are more aligned with functions in your organization. In some cases, we've seen clients of ours build geopolitical risk dashboards uh, or utilize something similar within their global security operations centers to help assess risks and monitor these ongoing activities. The opportunity here for resilience professionals, I think, is deep. Um, it is an opportunity for you to expound upon and, and expand your own understanding of geopolitical risk, but it's also an opportunity to think about your exercise strategies. How can you stress test certain scenarios? How can you ensure that your controls are set up in a way that robustly understand and measure geopolitical risk? And how can you help manage that for your organization? It opens the door for a broader conversation about global resilience within your organization that I think as the leader for business kind union crisis management, you have a great opportunity to take a part in and be part of the leadership conversation to get in front of this C-suite and your board and drive some of that conversation. If nothing else, there's a mental shift here that's happening with your board and your executives that eventually needs to happen in our space as well. It's the mental shift to adapt to this currently 
fracturing global center that we see today, the global order that we see today, and to be able to partner effectively as the resilience leader in your organization with your executives and with your board of directors. That's it for this edition of the Managing Uncertainty podcast. We'll be back next week with another new episode. Be well. Thanks for watching our video. To learn more about how to manage uncertainty and disruption in your organization, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to our video channel. And here are a few more videos that we've selected that will help you learn more about business continuity, crisis management, and crisis communications.